guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve with no further to do? Here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Breakthrough with Lou, guys. This is week three of our series on H1, Health First, okay? That is an ultimate, ultimate, important, important scenario in our lives is our health first. Hence, drinking a great, clean, alkaline water. So, you might have heard it, and you might not have. We can go months without food. Okay, you can actually live months without food. We can go weeks without water. <coughs> but we can... <coughs> yeah, going right along with what I'm about to tell you. We can only go minutes without air. Okay, you will not survive more than a few minutes without oxygen before your brain dies and your body shuts down and you're gone. So do you think one of the topics we're going to talk about today could possibly be important? as in the subject of breathing okay so number one i want you to catch on this topic is we're going to breathe anyway we're breathing and sometimes it doesn't seem like i'm breathing when i'm talking to you and i'm going to be going 100 miles an hour today because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time so breathing is simply the process of bringing in oxygen, exchanging it for carbon dioxide and other toxins, and exhaling that. And that's breathing. It's a, uh, an automatic response. If you hold your breath at some point, your body is going to make you breathe. You can't just stop your own breathing. I mean, there are things that could stop your breathing, but we don't want to do that. But my whole point here is... We're going to breathe anyway, so we may as well do it right. Would you like to know a couple of shortcuts today? Let me know in the chat. Hey, good morning, Sandy. Um, I'm going to get to sleep in a few minutes. I appreciate you sending in the questions, guys. I've got a, every question uh, board I can open. If you're on our site at accelerate AccelerateLife.com, it's the fastest way for me to see your questions. And on our personal page on Facebook, I'll see your questions other than that, I won't see them until after, and I will do my best to get back to you on those. Okay, so would you like to know how to breathe in a way that'll energize you? Okay, I've got a breathing exercise I'm going to give you here that you can do four times a day, three times a day, which will energize you, and it's called the one three two method. Very simple. You breathe in for a count of one, which is going to equal X. You breathe, you hold for a count of three, and then you exhale for a count of two. So if your inhale is a count of five, you're going to hold for 15, exhale for 10. If your inhale is a count of 10, you're going to hold for 30, you're going to exhale for two. So let's do a quick practice run on that one real fast um, with, the, with the five. Okay, so you're going to breathe in for one, two, three, four, five. You're going to hold for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you're going to exhale for 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, go back to normal breath. If you do that 10 times, 3 or 4 times a day, you're going to find you're energized more because you're taking that deep breath into the lower lobes of the lungs. Down here transmits twice as much oxygen. Now, I learned something cool that affirmed that the other day um, because I was talking to somebody about DUI process. He was going to school for it. And it was they, they, there's a reason they want you to empty the bottom side of the lungs because that gives the accurate blood alcohol level because that's where more of it transmits. And I'm like, see, that affirms that the oxygen and carbon dioxide transmission back and forth 
more of it takes place in the bottom of the lungs. This is why when you get stressed out and you're like, <laughs> you start to hyperventilate because you're only breathing up here and you're, ne you're starving of your oxygen. Wow. Cool concept, huh? Pretty simple stuff. This is why I'm talking about H1, not only H1, but simplifying it. I don't want this stuff to be difficult where it's a big old project just to breathe right, just to drink right, or to get a good night's sleep. We want to make this simple, usable, and something you can put into effect today that you're going to start to get results from today. Not, you know, okay, well, I got to do all this research and get a you know four-year degree before I can start to learn to breathe. I'm going to give you stuff today you're going to use today and make you feel better, okay? Now, another concept that we've come across lately, and I thank the, uh, one of the companies out there that makes this machine that monitors your breath and, you know, gives you tones to breathe by to lower blood pressure. Now, they're FDA, it's an FDA-approved device, very simple device, which you could probably do without the device if you got the breathing pattern down. It has been shown in study after study, and I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. None of this is uh, what I'm saying is FDA approved. I have not. I don't have anything special to offer you that you couldn't find on Google. However, I have found the things that are true, or tend to be true, and kind of some of the BS stuff, and gotten rid of the BS stuff so we can cut to the chase. So if you exhale longer than you inhale. It allows your blood vessels to relax, which allows the blood pressure to go down. Now, you don't have to be a doctor to say that. There's study after study. Google it. Don't take my word necessarily for gospel. So if you breathe in for five, exhale for seven to ten seconds. And you might think, am I going to you know, think of this? No. If you start to get stressed and you start to be in that situation and you, you've got high blood pressure, it runs high, or you, you can feel your pressure's up because you are got a lot going on, you're stressed out, just... It's that easy. Take four or five breaths like that. Number one, it will release those vessels. It'll get them to release. And number two, you're going to calm yourself by controlling your breathing and actually taking four or five seconds for yourself. What a cool concept is that? Even a minute for yourself. Is a minute during the day worth calming your body and calming your mind so that you can get back to focusing? I would say so. You know, we invest a lot of time, money, effort into the quick fixes in this world and the something somebody else is going to do for us when a lot of these solutions we have at our own fingertips or at our own nose tip where you're breathing in, okay? So breathing is done. That's, that's what I'm going to teach you on breathing today. Try that one, three, two breathing technique to energize and try to regulate your breath so you're breathing out just a little bit longer than you're breathing in and see what your results are. You know, take your blood pressure. Get in that part of the day where you're, you know, you're kind of feeling stressed and cranking along. Put your blood pressure cuff on, take your pressure. You know, breathe like that for two or three minutes where you're exhaling longer than you're inhaling. And take it again and see for yourself. Does it come down? Does your stress level come down? Try it out. You know, if you don't love it, you don't have to do it. If you love it and it's useful for you, take it and run with it. Say, thanks, coach. Great idea. And just go do it. Okay? I'm not charging you anything for that. No, no, no fee. You're not going to get a bill in the mail for, for you know, and I'm not going to, you're not going to have to maybe go buy pills over the counter to regulate your blood pressure. If you learn to breathe better, you might just have a breakthrough there. Okay? So let me know you guys are on this morning. Good morning, good morning. Yep, yep, all right. And we are going to go into the next step here. What is the next step? Okay, it's in the water. Dun, 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 dun. Remember Jaws was in the water? Dun, 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 dun. Then COVID was in the water. Dun, 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 dun. Now maybe monkeys are in the water. God only knows, you know. Every, every week it's going to be something, guys. So this is why we're going to get to stress in a little bit here because there's something going to come at you every week. And this is about you taking control of your body, your emotions, and going forward no matter what comes at you. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt tired, 
get really hungry during the day, even though you really just ate a couple hours ago. Um, you're confused, you're foggy, you're just downright weak. You just, oh God, I'm trying to push through. <sighs> you could be dehydrated. It could be that simple. There were studies done um, in the mid 40s and 50s of where doctors were you know, telling people, drink this and you'll, you'll, you'll get better. And it was water. And they were healing. There were doctors that were healing people from diseases and illness with water because they were so dehydrated and so toxic that their bodies were starting to fail. And once they got hydrated and flushed the stuff out, boom, they were getting better. It was like the miracle. This doctor's a miracle. Well, we kind of understood the, the concept of hydrating your body. Your body is, what, 70% water? And you think that during the day when you're sweating, urinating, taking a poo, and, you know, there's some water in there, and spitting, you know, your, your eyes water, you blow your nose, you don't think you're losing that hydration? There's a, a great doctor that teaches a lot about uh, some things that I love learning, and plant toxins and stuff like that, that insists we, you know, our body should recycle its own water. And I go, he's so smart in some ways, and the whole water thing is just a real turnoff to the, to the whole concept. And uh, I forgot to change my header on the little earth thing, so you know. It's not WTF today. Um, our, our show is breathe, drink, straight, sleep, and de-stress. But that doesn't really matter, does it? It's the content you're here for. Proves I'm human. All right, so we've all been told, drink eight glasses of water a day, and you're good. Is that, is that true? Well, let me ask you a question. Where do you live? Do you live in a northern? Do you live in Canada? Uh, do you live in the northern part of the U.S. where it doesn't get as hot? Or do you live in Florida? Or do you live in the desert southwest of the United States? Eight glasses of water in the desert southwest a day is probably not going to keep you going midsummer. You're still going to be dehydrated. Same with Florida. Now, six glasses of water make, might do just fine if you live in Buffalo, New York, and it's September, and it's already, you know, in the 50s at night and 70s during the day. What about, you know, do you work out vigorously? Are you a, a cardio runner? Do you go outside and run and sweat a lot? Do you use the, uh, the infrared sauna? The, so the, the amount of water for me to tell you this is what you need to drink a day? Now, you and I could sit down and kind of estimate by lifestyle. But my key to tell you here is if you become thirsty quite often, um, that's a problem. You're already dehydrated. By the time you're thirsty, you're dehydrated. And you're like, my God, I drink 10 glasses of water a day and I'm still thirsty. Well, get your, your sugar checked for one thing. Um, number two, become a sipper. Okay, years ago I was at an event and... We did our live blood and stuff like that. And the, the gal who was the nurse who went, we went over my blood work, she was like, uh, ooh, you're dehydrated, mate. And she was from South Africa. I'll never forget. Love the accent. But she's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, there's no way. I, I, I guzzled down a liter of water immediately upon coming in the room this morning. And I've had another liter. And that's, uh, we've only been here like an hour and a half. And she's like, oh, don't guzzle. Become a SIPA. And I'm like, what's a SIPA? I'm thinking S-I-P-P-A. She goes, you've got to drink slowly all day long to keep hydrated. You can't make up for it. You can't go, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I haven't drank water in five hours. I'm going to gobble down a big old bottle of water. Because that floods your body and pushes it right back out. And I was like, wow, learn here. She's a medical professional from a different part of the world. Right? You know, different, different aspect ratio on the view of things. And I was like, hmm. Huh. So I, I, I learned from her. Now, am I perfect with that one? Still not yet. Um, but the concept is there. You want to keep a continual flow during the day. The other concept that I love to teach when it comes to hydration is, wait a minute. It's not only drinking water. And please don't drink soda because that's going to have the total opposite effect amongst other ills and nastiness. Um, and I drink some coffee. Okay, I, I, I like my organic or you know sustainably raised coffee. Love it. Um, 
Not too much of it though. Cup in the morning and maybe a tiny little quarter cup, you know, around noon or something if I'm, you know, craving the taste. I do it more because I enjoy it. But coffee's great, but it does dehydrate you a bit. So you're going to have, you can, it's going to take two parts water to offset the dehydration effect of the coffee. Okay. So how else do you get enough hydration? You might be going, some people tell me, coach, I hate drinking water. Well, you could put some lemon in there. You could, you know, squeeze another fruit in there or, you know, the, you know, put mint water in your fridge or something, put mint in it, let it infuse. There's different options, but here's one of the greatest options in the world is raw vegetables and raw um, fruit, especially fruit is, tends to be very water rich. Berries and stuff like that, mango, that's super water rich. So you're eating a water rich food. Most Americans, hell, most people in the world these days, because you know, people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, they're eating dried, killed, cooked to death food. And that's dehydrating in itself, full of sodium, refined sodium. So they're always running around in the state of dehydration. So if you eat more fresh raw veggies, more fresh raw fruits, you are going to get a whole lot more hydration. Coconut water is excellent because it has some of the electrolytes you need. So you know, eat, eat more raw, fresh stuff, and you're going to find that your hydration levels are going to be a whole lot easier to maintain, and you'll feel better. You're not going to have that squinty feel halfway through the day or feel like you can take a nap after lunch and all that stuff. You're going to be well hydrated, which keeps your body clean. Now, that takes me to the yes or no question about tap water. I just, I've got a buddy that Oh, I drank out of the hose as a kid, and I drank tap water. I'm, 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 well, he's exactly my age, and he takes a barrage of pills every day. Better living through chemistry. I love him to death. He's like my brother. He's good, good people, you know. Just, but handful of medication a day. I take no medication a day. Does that mean I'll live longer, less longer? I would, I, you know, I don't want him to go anywhere. He's my friend. But uh, my point to that is I take no medications daily. I take some vitamins and some supplements and my apple cider vinegar and stuff. But the tap water? No, 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 my friends. Oh, my God. That is bad. I mean, especially, I mean, what, what have we heard in the past few years? The uh, Japanese uh, um, nuclear disaster, the, you know, all of a sudden COVID's in the water. They're filling it with fluoride to protect your teeth. I haven't drank tap water and I don't drink cow milk and I've never had a cavity in my life. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I had one tiny one and a baby tooth. Uh, which they didn't bother with because the truth was coming out anyway and probably because I ate too damn much sugar then. But I haven't had a cavity in my adult life. Okay, so, you know, and I've refused the uh, fluoride treatments at the dentist forever and ever. Am I telling you to do that, miss? No, maybe, I don't know. Make your own decision on that. But, oh, you're missing out on fluoride because you don't drink tap water. Tap water is recycled sewage, number one. There are so many pathogens, toxins. Every time that, that True Green sprays your neighbor's lawn, we're dumping poison into, this, into the earth. And, you know, here we got uh, Joe Blow, you know, oh, my God, we got to get rid of fossil fuels. Why don't we get rid of chemicals that we're spraying on everything? You want to talk, talk some turkey about the environment? Let's, let's, let's cut it out with the chemicals that we're putting right back into our bodies if you drink tap water. And all the pathogens, it's just, it's dirty. It's a dirty system. It's antiquated. You know, they don't come through and put in new anti uh, uh, bacteriostatic piping and filters and all that in your tap water. Those pipes have been there a long, long time. Even if you're in a new build, the stuff that feeds your neighborhood has been there a long, long time. And it's got a lot of gunk in it. Okay, so no to tap water. And some people are like, well, I have a, a little sink filter. Okay, that's better. How about getting a good quality water you trust, like Ten or uh, Essentia or Fiji? Uh, I'm not thrilled with Fiji's company practices right now, and I'm not being Mr. Woo Woo on that. I don't like the way they're treating their, their employees, uh, but they, 
situation that we've all dealt with over the past two years. Uh, yeah, uh, forcing anybody to do anything to keep a job is just wrong. I mean, anything with their personal body, et cetera. I mean, <laughs> to expect somebody to come in and do the job, yeah. But to tell somebody you got to, you know, inject or not inject, et cetera, boo-hoo. Bad for business, bad for just a bad mentality. But we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. So get a good, clean water you trust. And some people are like, oh, the plastics. Well, make sure they bottle BPA-free. Preferable would be, you know, like Voss in the glass bottle. But even Voss has gotten kind of cheaped out and very rarely using glass bottles. Glass would be the best. Now, a triple, quadruple filter, ba 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 ba, on your home stuff and boil it first and then add some electrolytes to it, you might be able to re recreate a good alkaline, clean, clean water. So, you want to make sure that it's sourced sustainably. I'm sorry, but the the waters that are marketed the most in the most places like the aqua what do you call it i'm not going to call it by name i don't want the, the big c to sue me um come out of the bay of miami <laughs> all right it's not a good clean water so source it do your research but clean yes alkaline yes or no what do you want okay I could tell you alkaline water is great for most people, unless you have kidney disease. Some people with kidney disease don't need any more alkaline than they already have. So for me to say, you, you know, it's a straight across the board alkaline water, probably for 95% of y'all, it's way better because we are way too acidic between the coffee we drink, the foods you consume, the stress, the pollution. And again, I'm not being woo-woo out there and going, we need to electrify the whole world and don't do this. and you know, go for Greenpeace, and I don't buy into the global warming uh, whole, whole nonsense. Yes, there's been some climate changes. Yes, we need to take better care of our environment. No, we're not gonna, you know, cook over the next few years and just burn up or something. You know, there's just, yeah, that's a whole different story again, but you know, what is best for you, okay? Get that alkaline water in if it's something that works for your current health situation. We all live too acidic, you know, and be, be responsible. You know, when, you, when you're cutting up your food and that and you, you, you get your veggie scraps, they don't need to go in the garbage. Go throw them in the backyard somewhere. Feed some of the critters. Let it go back to the earth. Let's, let's clean it up. You know, let's, let's not, you know, let's keep what we've done. I mean, think about it when it comes to environmental. How far have we come just in the last decade, maybe two decades, mostly decade, in emissions control on vehicles? We have cleaned that up big time, big time. When was the last time you saw L.A. smog on the news and stuff like that? Now, I'm not saying that you know it's still the cleanest source of energy, et cetera, et cetera. I think solar is one of the cleanest, okay, if you can direct run it. But... Think about some of the strides we have made and what the difference that's going to make on you. But yet we still, like I say, we're spraying toxins on our own lawn where our own children and our pets play. And we think that's okay because we don't want to see a bug. If it kills the bug, it's going to kill you. Okay? Not as fast, but these are the things you got to think about. So when you are making these choices, make them wisely. Same thing with your water. You know, it costs more to buy good quality water. But does it cost more in the long run in medical expenses if your water is killing you? If it's making you sick? Okay? So, yeah, I'm not on a rant about it. I just, I want you to drink clean and preferably alkaline water unless you have a health issue that prevents you from being able to. Okay, speaking of water, I'm going to take a sip here because I'm getting dry mouth. Okay. So let's talk about the elephant sitting on society. This elephant's not in the room. This elephant is sitting on society. Oh, there's my microphone. How cute. Uh, just little things that catch my attention. I'm squirreling on you today. But seriously, what's the elephant on society? Okay. Lack of it is a badge of courage. Oh, yeah. You think you didn't get any sleep last night. Let me tell you something. 
They're so busy, I'm not getting four hours sleep a night, or I can party all night long and keep going. Or, you know, the kids are up all night, or that damn dog, or... Okay, if your damn dog keeps you up all night, put the dog outside, okay? If your spouse snores, there's always a pillow. No, just kidding. If your spouse snores, help them with, get them some peppermint oil, put it under the nose, open up that, or get them a, you know, the, the face monster machine, whatever it takes to get a nice sleep. And this is where we're going to talk right here. Sandy, I, I'm going to answer your question in a second. So sleep, it's not funny. It's not cool to compare how much less sleep you get than anybody else. You know, people think that, oh, yeah, I'm on my road to success and I never sleep and I get up at three in the morning and I stay up till midnight the next night. Getting up at three in the morning? Cool. Yeah, man, you can get a lot done between three and six a.m. or whatever because nobody else is up and you're not bothered. Uh, maybe you get up at six. I wake up somewhere between 10 to six and six to 10 every day. Sometimes a few minutes after that. But I'll, I'll go into why and what. We're going to talk about that in a second because there's something super important. Don't you tune off now. Something super important I want to talk to you about. Okay, so sleep is not, a, lack of it is not a badge of courage, my friends. It's a suicide mission. Okay. Now, this comes from the guy that used to run on four hours sleep almost entirely through my 20s. And, you know, I... One, two in the morning, back up at six, ba 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 ba, and that's that was, that's all fine and dandy, but that was a little too little. But what's more important than how much sleep you get is how you function through your sleep cycles. Now, there's one sleep doctor that'll argue this to the death with me, and then there's 150,000 sleep doctors that'll agree with me on this. Waking up at the end of your sleep cycle when it's time to get up makes you wake up refreshed, is not hard on your cardiovascular system, it's better for your mood, etc. What is that sleep cycle? Somewhere between 90 and 120, or generally 110 minutes. Um, everybody varies a little bit. So is eight hours sleep good by the 90 minute model? No, you're back into a deep sleep and I'm gonna give you a very quick explanation. When you first go to sleep, the first 10 or 15 minutes, you're in level one. You know, when you're not even sure you're asleep, you can still hear stuff or, you know, you're kind of, you know, sleepy, dreamy, whatever. The next goes into a deep sleep. Two and three are deep and there's very minimal differences between them. That your deep formless sleep where you're, you're not really dreaming. There's some dreaming in possibly in, in, in zone three, but not really much. But that's a very restorative sleep. Also, ever-living hell you're going to pay if you're jarred out of that sleep. That's when you're shaky and upset and you don't know where you are. And you, you, we've all woken up on, on one of those, especially to a freaking alarm clock or somebody ringing the doorbell in the middle of the night or the kids scream or the dog starts barking. Da, 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 da. We've all woken up from that sleep cycle. And then there's REM. That's the fun part. You're dreaming. You're excited. But now in REM, you're also in paralysis because you would probably be up on domestic violence charges every other day because you'd be smacking your, your partner in bed, okay? And maybe beating up on you know, yourself because you would be acting out your dreams. So you go into a physical paralysis during REM. Now I know a lot about sleep, guys. I've done a lot of study on it and I still have some issues. It's gotten way better, but my sleep patterns have never been the greatest. And they've gotten better, which gives better energy, which has is, is led to better health overall for me. So this is what I want for you. But, you know, right after that REM, at the end of that REM, your body heats up. You are in a very light sleep. And if you awaken, you're clear, you're ready to go. So by that, by a 90-minute cycle, eight hours would have you right into a deep sleep again where seven and a half hours would pull you out right at the end of REM, feeling fresh and relaxed and, and, and ready to go. Have you ever gotten a six hour night? You know, if you're one of these people that's always strived for eight hours, have you ever gotten a six hour night and said, yeah, I feel really good even though I only got six hours sleep? Yeah, because that's probably right around your right sleep cycle. And then have you ever slept eight hours and gone, 
I feel like I just went to bed. My God, I'm so groggy. Okay, guys, I can't stress this enough. I am a huge freak on sleep cycles. Okay, just because I put it to the test and it works. Now, the other thing is, on the sleep cycles, you could take a weekend, a long weekend or something with no outside factors bugging you and go to bed, sleep till you wake up. doesn't mean you might not get up and pee or something, but sleep till you wake up naturally. And when you wake up naturally, get out of bed and do that for three, four nights in a row. And guess what? You're going to pretty much go, there's a pattern here. Okay. So my next thing I want to talk to you about is wake up without that effing alarm. That thing is your enemy. If you got to set an alarm and it jacks you out of sleep and you wake up and that, oh, where am I? Who am I? Oh my God. Uh, you're, you're, you're kicking yourself out of the wrong sleep cycle. You're setting your day up for massive failure, massive emotional failure, etc. Okay. So learn and you're like, well, I, I, I got to be to work. I got to set the alarm. Okay. If you're waking up and it's, and you're confused and all out of sorts, that means you're in the wrong sleep cycle. Go from the back side of that and go, okay, I'm going to get up at 6 in the morning. You might want to set that back up alarm for, you know, 6, 10 in case you don't get up to start forming the habit. But back that up and go, oh, okay, well, I'm getting, you know, 6 and 3 quarters hours the way the time I'm going to bed to get up at 6. No wonder I'm in the middle of a deep sleep. So go to bed just a hair earlier to make sure you pull through those sleep cycles. And once you figure out really what your sleep cycle is, whether it's 90 to 110, um, you can go to bed at the right time each night, get up at the same time each day. And I'm giving you the house here. I'm giving you a lot of what we teach in the course right here. Boom. At 100 mile an hour, you know, you're drinking from a fire hose kind of, kind of, you know, great, but I'm giving you all this stuff. This is what works. Okay. We deep dive deeper into this in the courses and stuff and you learn practices, but I'm giving you a lot of information today. And I told you the show was going to be big, fast and going to get this to you because this is all important. Okay. So don't, don't, whatever you do, do not hit the damn snooze button. How much worse could you make it than to tap that snooze button, go right back into level one and into level two, where your body's wanting to sleep for a good 90 to 110 minutes, and you're going to jar it right back out 15 minutes later. You're even in a deeper sleep cycle. So you've just done this to yourself twice. You've made your heart beat fast. You've shoved adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine through your system. Boom, you know, stress response. And now you're even late on top of it because, oh man, I should have been up 15 minutes ago. That's going to, that, that, that is not the way to start your day. Absolutely no snooze button. If you still need an alarm to set the habit, you know, make it a gentle alarm, not a ah, ah, ah. Old, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh my God. Can't think of his name right now. He was a motivational speaker, but he used to call it the opportunity clock. Um, Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar used to call it an opportunity clock. You know, these days we've got every different way to wake up. We can wake up to music. We can wake up to our phones lighting up, you know, a little light vibration. Don't wake up to, welcome to the jungle. I love Guns N' Roses, but I don't want to wake up to them. You know, if you got to wake up to something, do something that starts out quiet and pulls you out of the sleep a little bit better. Long, we're we're going to deep dive into this on, on seminar coming up on June 5th, which is going to be awesome, by the way. I'm going to tell you about that when we finish up. All right, so get rid, of the, get rid of the alarm. Understand your sleep cycles. Go to bed. And here's one that I'm, I wasn't even going to give you today because you're supposed to take my course to get it. Get up and go to bed around the same time every day. Don't go on, oh, on the weekend I can sleep in and be lazy and stay up late. And it, it totally undoes your circadian rhythm. Okay? Get up and get up. Life is, is, is your life not valuable enough for you to go, hey, you know what? Instead of going to sleep or instead of getting up or sleeping in, I can have an extra couple hours a day with my family, with my loved ones, you know, with my spouse. What? 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 Yeah. That's priceless because you only got one life. Oh, hey, Sandy, yes, your question. 
uh, does it have to be dark to sleep? Okay, with the production of melatonin and, and other hormones that help you sleep, yes, light will affect your sleep. Uh, some people like to sleep in the night light on, and that if you do, if you if you're more comfortable because you got little night terrors or something, people are at them, put it on a timer, and you know as you're dozing off, you can still have a low light like a salt lamp or something on, and then have it turn itself off. You do need to be in the darkness. Stay away from your electronics for at least an hour or two before bed. Watching TV in bed is an absolute no-no. Get that effing thing out of the bedroom. If you want to watch TV, watch it in the living room, okay? And then give yourself that time to de decompress. And it's not that, oh, it's that show did it to me. I used to always say, Law & Order works me up too much at night. It does. It gets my brain going. I love the show. But it, it, it was the light of the TV, the blue light, that signal, signals your brain don't produce melatonin. It's daytime. It's that simple. It's a scientific fact. And these are the things, once you understand them, you can go, I'm in control of this. Not this, this clunky old two million year old brain of ours. I'm in control of this. I lead the way. All right, so, got it for sleep? I know, you probably need more help with that. Take the course, take the seminar, or get coaching with me. We'll get this stuff right. But when you get your sleep right, whoo-hoo, a lot of the rest of it falls into place. <sighs> Stress. It's kind of like a marriage, kind of like a spouse. Can't live with it. Can't live without it. Okay? How many times have you heard that? Well, you can't live without stress because if there's no stress, and some stress is good stress, like physical stress on the body can be good. Heat shock proteins are a stress. And uh, that's, that's a buzzword these days. It comes from you know, the saunas and stuff. We'll talk about that another time. But in physical stress, if you don't lift weights, you don't get stronger. You don't run or you don't do something to strengthen your heart and your cardio, it, 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 it fails. Okay, so some stress you got to have. You can't live without it. And then there's some stress you can't, just can't seem to live with. Okay, stress has been linked to so many diseases. So many, it's a leading cause in so many diseases. Heart disease, this, that, strokes, cancer. And, and people are like, well, you know, okay, I'm stressed out. And they love drama. Who, lo who really loves drama? I know. I don't either, David. Um, who, yeah, really, at our age especially, you don't want to live in a state of drama. So it can be a leading cause of diseases. Now, let's review something about stress. If you've seen the show, I've done stress shows on stress and that. Stress and excitement are parallel physiologically in the body. Physiologically, if you don't know, means your physical responses, your, your hormone production, your chemical response to things in your body. So they, 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 they're right next to each other, one laying over, going the same direction, almost the same. You know, Bruce Springsteen used to go on, before he'd go on stage, he'd go, my hands start to sweat and my heart beats fast and I know I'm ready. And uh, what's her name? Babs used to go have panic attacks because her hands would start sweating, her heart, heart would start racing, and she knew she was having a panic attack. Same physiological response. One got on stage and rocked. The other one, you know, had to cancel a show. Okay? So you go, well, that's kind of weird. Never even looked at it that way. Yeah. You know what the difference is? Stress has a negative connotation. Excitement has a positive, okay? Very similar and physiological. I mean, some slight differences, but nothing you need to know about. Okay, so keep that in mind that next time you feel like you're getting stressed out, maybe you're getting excited because something good's going to happen around the corner if you take action. A whole different day, too. We're going to talk about taking action and, and all kinds of stuff. We've got a great year coming up for the show, guys. I'm starting to really map things out because I want you to recover from the pile of poop that's been dumped on our plates over the past few years. I want you to recover, and I don't care, this is not a political statement, I don't care what side of the fence you are, what, what, you know, any of that, we've all been through some major stresses over the past few years. So I want you all to be able to step up and go, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm in control of me, no matter what tries to come at us, that 
we stay unified as a as a community of progress that says, oh, we're we're not we're not going to tolerate some stuff, okay? We, this is this is our world, our country, and that re releases stress in itself when you band together with your community and go, I don't have to agree with you to stand by you and protect our community and, and each other and step up. You don't have to love your neighbor to lend a helping hand, okay? You don't have to agree on everything because that's exactly what we don't want in this world. That, that would create more stress. So stress reduction or stress relief. Some people are like, hmm, kind of the same thing. Not at all. Stress reduction is based on anticipation in being to anticipate what could go wrong. Always look for what's right, but always know something could go wrong. And if it goes wrong, here's what we do to handle it and get right back on track. That's stress reduction, uh, being more organized, you know, having a plan, planning, creation, having a map of how things are supposed to operate, scheduling things properly. You know, we all know the person that pays a late fee on every single bill because I have no idea when it's due. Have you ever heard of Google Calendar? Put it on there. Water bills due on the 13th when it's due on the 15th. That way you... If on the 13th something drastic happens, you have an emergency with one of the kids or something, you can turn around and, you know, go, oh, good. Okay, I still got time to pay this, even if it's at 9 o'clock at night and I'm not going to get a late fee. Uh, sales taxes have always been one of those back, you know, years ago when I was in the car business. The 20th of the month, I'd shut my office door and they basically the door said, stay the F away. I'll do If the building's not on fire, leave him alone. Because... Due on the 1st, late on the 20th. I'm sitting there toiling on the 20th to get these things done. <sighs> Why? How silly is that? I've had 19 days to do it. And I wait till the last minute. But it took me years. Now I put it on the calendar. The 15th they're due. And I generally get them done around the 16th or 17th. And, you know, that way if something pops up, because our state penalties for sales tax are stupid deep percentages, even for one day late. So, but why have that stress that at five o'clock on the 20th, I'm hitting that button at 4.59 and go, whew, I got him in and, you know, I'm shaking. And, what? That's silly. That's called stress reduction. Scheduling is great for that. Stress relief is a lot more fun. It's massages, meditation, prayer, uh, intimate relations are great for stress reduction. Uh, vacations, um, you know, all kinds of stuff, whatever you like to do. Some people, you know, even the OCR races are stress relief for me. Physical stressing big time, you know, reclining, running, you, know, you get some injuries out on the course, you get beat up, you're going through mud, it's hot, you know, you get scraped by barbed wire, but it's still for me a stress relief. And you might be going, no, 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 coach, I'm going to go to yoga instead. Okay, yoga is a great stress relief. But the difference is stress reduction is more of an anticipation. Stress relief helps your body recover from the stress that you can't avoid. That's my whole point to stress this morning, what I want to get you. So we talked about it. You need to breathe. You may as well do it right. You need to be hydrated. You may as well do it in a way that's good for you. And we need to sleep. So you may as well do that in a way that is not another stressor to go, oh my God, I got to get to bed right now, or oh my God, I got to set the clock, or I'm never getting enough sleep, or I'm so tired. How about just learning about your sleep cycles so that you can wake up without that stupid alarm or wake up before the alarm if you're, you know, some people have to set the alarm. Some people are, you know, would sleep 10 hours if they didn't set an alarm. Don't know how that happens, but hey, that could be you and God bless you. Uh, no snooze button. I don't care if you think, oh, I can sleep in 15 extra minutes because I've been setting the clock early to get, you know, develop a new habit. Get out of bed the minute the clock goes off or you open your eyes. When I go to sleep at night and I wake up in the morning, I guess that's somewhere between 10 to 6 and quarter after, for instance, I, I, I go, oh, I think it's time to get up. And I go, yep, it's time to get up. It's 10 to 6, 2 to 6, 2 after. It's all within that same time frame. 
What if I wake up at 5.30? Do I go, oh, goody, I can sleep another half hour until the clock goes off? No, I'd be in the middle of that deep sleep and that would not be good. Now, if it's a morning, I don't really have to get up and maybe I worked late the night before or something. I might go back to sleep and let myself wake up at 6.30 or quarter to seven naturally out of that sleep cycle because I will. But if it's a morning where it's like, no, I really need to be up at 6 or 6.15 to be able to do whatever like on a Monday morning, I can't wake up a quarter after 7 or 7.45 and, you know, roll out of bed and come on here and go, hey, guys, this is a show. Uh, you know, so I make sure I'm up. But I'm always up before I set the clock as a backup. But I'm always up early. But, you know, it's like this morning. It was, it was 12 minutes to 6. I woke up and I'm like, hey. Yeah, I'm ready to go because I'm excited about Mondays anyway. But what if I woke up at 530? Hey, I'm ready to go. I got an extra half hour. The way I look at it is I go, I get an extra half hour of day. I get an extra half hour of my life that I get to live. How about thinking of it that way? Instead of going, oh, I lost in a half hour sleep. We don't, we don't want to lose. Humans are not designed to lose. But if you go, oh, I gained an extra 30 minutes today, I can really get prepped up or I can you know, do a little longer yoga practice or bounce on the rebounder for five more minutes because I feel really good when I do that. And usually I don't have that, extra, that much extra time. You know, I get on there for five minutes, I'm done. Today I get to do 10, I'll feel twice as good. All right? And then stress. You know, you got to ask yourself, one of the, the biggest stress busters is to ask yourself, what does this really mean? Could this be exciting rather than stressful? You know, oh, this is going to be tough, but you know, at the end of this, I'm going to grow or, you know, we're going to innovate or my relationship's going to get better, even though it's a, a little tumultuous time. And then you've got, okay, there's certain stresses we can't get around. You know, let's face it, we live in America or we live in the planet Earth and, you know, we live in reality. We don't sit in a circle somewhere going kumbaya, it's all going to be okay. Um, nothing wrong with that if it makes you feel good, but you know, stuff going on. We're getting, we, we're, there's stress coming at us every day and really ridiculous amounts of stress from the news media. You want to, you want to reduce your stress? Then watch the news. Uh, watch me instead. I'll deliver what you need to know. No, seriously, stress relief though is amazing because it helps your body recover from the stress. Once you ask the question what something really means, most of the time it's not as stressful, but we're still going to have stress. And don't forget, good stress is like going in a sauna creates heat shot pro proteins. That is a stressor on the body. So don't, don't think that all stress is bad. That actually helps eliminate plaques in the body. And we all know what plaques are related to. Some diseases up here and in here. And, you know, there's a lot of research on that. Go, go hunt it down. But... You know, stress relief, go get a massage, go meditate, go pray, go walk in the woods, go jump out of an airplane. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that you could do that relieve your stresses and will help you live a longer, healthier life, notwithstanding a bus running you over or something goofy like that. So that's it, guys. That's the show for this morning. Now I'm going to post the links below everywhere this is showing for June 5th. I've got the live interactive seminar, webinar, uh, mastermind, whatever you want to call it, whatever word's going to get you on with me. Uh, it's going to be three to four hours. It's a half a day. We're going to dive, deep dive into H1 Heals introduction. It's healthy eating and lifestyle simplified. It's not a diet. It's not a bunch of products to buy. It's an interactive seminar, webinar, however you want to call it, where we're going to dig deeper into this stuff because I know you have questions. I know you're going to start doing some stuff and go, I don't know, I'm having a little trouble with this one or I need to have more information. But you're going to be able to ask questions and really get into this so that you can make a difference. Now, let's face it, guys. That I do charge for. Oh, it's, it's expensive, too. We've got to be careful. $27. Okay? You're getting three to four hours of coaching with me. $27. You can't get 15 minutes coaching with me one-on-one -on -one for $27. And that's not being pig-headed or any of that. Guys, you know, it is it is worth 100 times. I'm deliver 100 times. But, you know, this stuff does cost me to produce. So I would really appreciate the support on that. If you're getting something from what I'm giving you, dive into that. You're going to get 100-fold that day. 
but you're also going to help me keep this going. It's all costs. Every minute we stream, every minute we're on podcasts, all that, that costs. I don't, I don't take the freebie and use a little bit of this service and that service and, and that to bring this to you. I bring this to you. I, I, you know, we've got to have the proper streaming. We've got to, all the way around in our business. We're not going to shortcut. I'm not going to sit there and go, well, I can only do a 40-minute uh, presentation because I've, I'm on the free server. Okay. And hey, if that works for you, that works for you. Some people can do that. That's not how we do it. My goal is to deliver as much value to you as possible. So help me out with that. Share the show. Share that seminar. It's life-changing. It'll be fun. You get to interact with me for four hours. Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty fun. I would hope so. If I'm not, tell me so. I'll become more fun. I will uh, learn how to stress less or whatever it takes. No, seriously. So I want to see you on that. Don't forget Heals the Course is up on our site, accelerateLife.com. That is a major deep dive. It's 30 days worth of, of lessons, video lessons. And they range anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour per lesson. And there's 30 plus of them. It's actually more than a 30-day course. Or you could take it a little quicker if you're an overachiever, but it really catches everything and works you through it. There's a great workbook that goes with it. A lot of good stuff coming up. Next week's show, we're going to talk about putting all the things we've been talking about together so that it becomes a seamless lifestyle. You can't sit there and go, oh, this week I'm going to focus on dietary. This week I'm going to focus on exercise. It, it, it's not all little pieces like a universe of planets floating around individually. It's how do you meld that together into a lifestyle that you can live, enjoy, and kind of goes on autopilot. You know, people tell me all the time, Coach, I want your diet. I just eat. I figured out what works. I figured out what I like that intertwines here, and it works and I like it, and it's not too difficult to do, and I just do it. It's that simple. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about fasting, too. That's something I want to get in there. There's some fasting that I'd like to introduce you to. And wow, I am definitely running over time. Sorry to keep you guys so long this morning. Sorry, not sorry. If you got value out of this, I would teach all day long. And we will have quite a teaching all day long in the seminar. All right, guys, live with faith, energy, passion, always live your dreams. And I will see you guys on the next roundabout. Ready to take it to the next level? Next level. Tune in to XLR8Life.com for our live shows, encore presentations, life-changing courses, and live coaching with Coach Lou himself. As Coach Lou always says, live with faith, energy, love, passion, and always live your dream.